All right, so this is sample number five on the uh, high school sample items. And I've noticed that I have my answer eliminator. That's not going to be very helpful because it's, it's not multiple choice. But I have a ruler, I'm not going to use another ruler, a protractor, and calculator. So I can use a calculator on this one if necessary. So I'll just pull it out, make sure I have it ready. <coughs> All right. So the question says, a local mini golf course charges $5 per person to play a round of golf, and the course sells 120 rounds of golf per week. The manager of the course studied the effect of raising the price to increase revenue and found the following data. The table shows the price, number of rounds of golf, and weekly revenue for different numbers of 25 cent increases in price. So that means one is 25 cents, two is 50 cents, three is 75 cents, and so on. <coughs> the price of a round of golf, P of N, and you notice that the, the price is going up by 25 cents each time. Number of rounds of golf, it is decreasing, and that makes sense because as it becomes more expensive, less people are going to play. But the weekly revenue is increasing because even though they're getting less people, the people are paying more. But at some point, you're going to get to a place where so few people go that you'll be losing money. And the interesting thing here is the revenue is, is always going to end up being a quadratic relationship. So we know that we have a linear relationship with the number of rounds of golf because it's going up by a steady amount. But the revenue is going to be some sort of a quadratic relationship. So I know I have two different relationships that are going to come into play at some point because profit, ma uh, maximizing profit will be a quadratic relationship always. So based on the data, write a linear function to model the price of one round of golf. That's P of n in terms of n, uh, the number of 25 cent increases. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to analyze the table. And so I notice that it is going up by 25 cents. So that means, I'll go into my editor here. It's not what I wanted, I wanted that. So I'm in the editor here. <coughs> so that means that I have a slope of 25 because for every increase of one in the uh, price increases, I have a 25 cent increase in my cost, or in my revenue. <coughs> and that is multiplied by n because that this depends upon, or the increase depends upon how many times I've increased. And then I have my y intercept, which would just be 5, because when I have no increases, I have a cost of $5 plus 5. Then I also need to have, uh, based on the data, write a linear function to model the number of rounds of golf sold in terms of n. Well, here it's a little different. Here, I notice I'm going down by 3 every time. So that means I have a negative slope. I have a slope of negative 3, because that means I'm losing 3 rounds of golf for every 25 cent increase. And so I still have my n. But in this case, I am starting with 120 players when, with my typical cost of $5. So I'm successful with this one. Great, we will move on. Part B. Based on the data, white, write a quadratic function. Ooh, I knew that was going to come. Write a quadratic function for the weekly revenue R of n in terms of n. So let's talk about really quickly, just logically, what is weekly revenue? Well, weekly revenue is going to be equal to it's going to be equal to the cost of a round of golf. So that's P of n times the number of of rounds. So in other words, 525 times 117 is equal to $614.25. Likewise, $6 times 108 is equal to $648. So essentially, I'm taking P of n, and I am multiplying it by S of n. 
But wait a second. Another way of saying p of n is my expression down here. So I have 0.25n plus 5 times negative 3n plus 120. So I now have a quadratic function. I know it's quadratic because when I multiply 0.25n times negative 3n, I'm going to get negative 0.7 or yeah, negative 0.75n squared. And since I have the square term, it's a quadratic. So let's scroll down so I can put that in there. All right. So then, <coughs> it says, based on the data, write a quadratic function in terms of n. OK, I'm in n. So here we go. So we have, in parentheses, 0.25n. And I don't have to multiply it out. I don't have to have it in expanded form, because it doesn't ask for it. So there's my <coughs> function of the cost based on the increases. Then I have the function for the amount of money that I, uh, now I have the function of the number of rounds that I sell. And so it says, use your quadratic function to determine the weekly revenue when the ticket costs are 625. Well, how many increases have I had at 625? Well, that would be 5, because 5 times 25 is $1.25. So let's go ahead and use my calculator. So we have 0.25 times my n value of 5, which is how many increases it needs I need to have to get six dollars and twenty-five cents plus five because that was my equation. And then I'm going to multiply that by negative three times five. And then I'm gonna add one twenty-five because that's what my function dictates. Oh, I'm so sorry. That's okay. I'm in the middle of recording a video, so that's okay. So let's go ahead and uh, figure this out. 0.25 times 5 plus 5 is obviously going to be 625. It already gives us that in the problem, which is nice. So then negative 3 times 5 is negative uh, 15 plus 125. So that means I'm going to sell uh, 105 rounds of golf. And I can multiply it by times to 625. Uh, you better stay with it. Once the popcorn stops popping, that's when you take it out. Nothing like getting instructions on how to pop popcorn on, on your math video. That doesn't have anything to do with popcorn. So I multiply these things together, and I get a grand total of $656.25. Part C, oh my goodness, what is the maximum possible weekly revenue that is, uh, uh, sorry, the maximum possible weekly revenue is what percent greater than the weekly revenue with no price increase? Just, uh, just fire your answer uh, graphically or algebraically. So graphically need, means a graph. Am I able to get a graph in this? Not really. OK. So <coughs> let's do some scratch work first, and then we will move on. Uh, and, and we'll type up our answer. So we have a parabola. And we know that the parabola, if I charge $0, obviously, I'm going to make no profit. 
So what I'm looking for here is the x-intercepts, because that's going to give me the line of symmetry. And if I have the line of symmetry, then I can plug that x value in to find the maximum. So that's my first uh, course of action. So let's take a look at this. So let's multiply this thing out. Or actually, I don't need to multiply it out. It's already in factored form. All right. <coughs> so to, f to find the x-intercepts, I need to have a quadratic in terms of, uh, in factored form and equal to 0. So I have 0 is equal to point two five n plus 5. And then I also have negative n, no, negative 3n, plus $120, or 120 rounds of golf. And I need to set this equal to 0. So let's go ahead and solve. Well, I'll subtract 5 from this side, subtract 5 from this side. And so I'll get negative 5 is equal to point two five n. So let's obviously gonna divide both sides by point two five. So I have five divided by point two five. So I get twenty. And since I have a negative divided by a positive So we know that n over here is equal to negative 20. Over on this side, subtract 120, subtract 120. So I get negative 3n is equal to negative 120. So divide by 3, divide by 3, negative 3 rather, sorry. So I get n is equal to 40. So that means this point at zero profit is going to be at 40 price increases. And oh, I guess my diagram is a little off. So what, what it means is actually happening here. Now my computer's really upset. Oh well. As it crashes. So really, my x-intercept is, is here, which would make sense because here is my five, right? Or five hundred. <coughs> yep, that's my five. That's five hundred. And so this point here is negative twenty. So what number is in between negative 20 and 40? Well, 40 minus 20 is, or plus negative 20 is going to be 20. Don't do that. And half of 20 is going to be 10. So we want to maximize our profit at 10 price increases. That's exactly it. So 10 price increases at 25 cents a pop is going to be $2.50. So that means my maximum, uh, to maximize my profit, I need to charge $7.50. Well, if I charge $7.50, how many people will I have? My n value is 10. Negative 3 times 10 is negative 30. Yeah, negative, negative 30 plus 20 or 120 is going to be 90. So I'll still have 90 people coming. And so I'm going to multiply my cost per round of $7.50 times 90 rounds of golf. And now I'll go to the calculator. So I have 90 times 7.5. And so that means my maximum profit or ma sorry, maximum revenue is going to be $675. So <coughs> wouldn't it be nice if we're done, but we're not.
because it asks the maximum possible weekly revenue is what percent greater than the weekly revenue. Are you kidding me? Well, I mean, this problem by itself takes forever. So let's go back up. And so our initial revenue is $600. So if my original revenue is $600, and now I'm making six seventy seventy-five, that means I have 75 more dollars that I make every week. Well, what percent is 75 of my original six, uh, 600? So 75 divided by my 600 equals. So that means I have a revenue increase of 12.5%. Oh my goodness. That was a long problem, but that is your final answer.